Okay, how many hours did you sleep last night? Be honest with me. What time did you get to bed? Was it 11, 12, even 1 a.m.? And when did you wake up? Was it seven or eight in the morning? Let's be real, guys. You probably don't spend much of your day thinking about how much you sleep. Sleep is one of those things that just happens, right? I mean, everybody does it, so you don't really have to think about it too much, right? Of course, if I asked you to put five seconds of thought into it and tell me why everyone sleeps, you would probably tell me something like, oh, people sleep because they get tired, and then when they wake up, they get tired again, so they sleep again, and then they get tired again and again and again, they sleep again and again and again. You get this circular argument, which doesn't actually make any sense. Now, in the past, I never actually thought of sleep as something Something to be thought about. It's like breathing, walking, or pooping. Just some redundant biological function that we haven't solved yet, so you just don't really need to worry about it. In high school, if you had asked me to rank the things that contribute to your overall health and well-being, I wouldn't have even put sleep on that list because I didn't know it was a thing. I'd probably say diet, exercise, and social connection, but not sleep. But then, all of a sudden, a few years ago, I was on a plane and I randomly discovered this book, Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. This is actually one of the first books I ever listened to in Audible and purely by chance, completely changed the course of my life. By the end of this video, I'm going to convince you that one, sleep is as important as the other most important things in your life. And two, I'm going to teach you how to deliberately get better at it because sleep is a skill and it can be improved. Just like chess, running, mathematics, it's something you continuously get better at. Okay, first of all, what would happen if you just kept sleeping like you already do and didn't change anything? Let's say after you finish this video, you forget everything I say and keep all of your habits exactly the same. Assuming you're the average person, but you're probably a little bit better because you're watching a self-help channel, you probably consistently get between six and seven hours every night. If you're a student, it's probably even less than that. Now, did you know, according to Dr. Matthew Walker, the world's leading expert on sleep science, routinely sleeping less than six or hours per night demolishes your immune system, more than doubling your risk for cancer. Let me say this again. Sleeping less than six hours per night doubles your risk of cancer. That's insane. And if you are just the average person or the average student, you've just doubled your risk of cancer by being normal, doing what everyone else does and sleeping six to seven hours per night. And because a whopping 40% of people get cancer at least once, that's almost half. If you're sleeping completely normally, just like average, you'll probably get cancer. And that says nothing about depth of sleep, sleep efficiency, consistency. Like what the f Why did nobody tell me this as a kid? And that is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to shit sleep. If you're a normal person. Bro, honestly, there's this idea in our society that normal means good. Oh, it's normal to stay up all night. Oh, it's good to drink alcohol regularly. Oh, it's normal to sacrifice your health for your career. Just because of thing is normal doesn't mean it's ideal or even good. Now, this is going to make some people mad, but the average normal ACT score in this country is 19. Bro, I'm sorry to say, but you do not want to be average. And when you consider that there's a large proportion of people who are below that 19, yeah, normal, average, not good. If you're not already convinced that you need to get your sleep in order at this point, here are a few more negatives if you sleep like a normal person. Bad sleep makes you significantly more likely to develop cardiovascular disease and stroke later in life. Poor sleep also contributes to every mental illness from depression to anxiety to suicidality. According to Dr. Walker, there is not one mental illness where sleep is normal. Just think about that. Every mental illness is correlated with abnormal sleep. Again, why did nobody tell me this when I was younger? I feel like this book should be required reading for every high schooler because I distinctly remember people competing for who could sleep the least. It used to be normal to brag about getting two to three hours of sleep several nights in a week. It's just a crime that nobody realized that they were slowly killing themselves. So another argument that people make to justify their poor sleeping habits is that they utilize those one to two hours of not sleeping to be more productive in other areas. I mean, it's a fair argument. You can get a lot done with an extra one to two hours of focus time in your day, right? Wrong. That advice is bullshit and here's why. See, people don't realize that when you sleep badly, you become 30% worse overall at everything you do. There is nothing that gets better with a little bit of sleep deprivation. Let's hyper-focus on the impact of sleep on memory because a lot of people making the productivity argument are students and students supposedly care about learning. Good sleep the night before you learn drastically refreshes your ability to make new memories the next day. Matthew Walker did a study where he brought a bunch of healthy young adults into his lab and then divided the group into two. Everyone came into the lab around noon and just did a lot of intensive work. They memorized a lot of stuff. Then one group was allowed to mess around for a few hours. They scrolled TikTok, played board games, just hung out. The other half took a 90 minute nap. Then later on, both groups did another deep learning session. Guess which group did better? The students who took a 90 minute nap had a 20% learning advantage. They remembered both the information before the nap and after the nap 
that much better. Guys, a 20% boost to your overall memory is insane. That's the difference between a B minus and an A plus. And it compounds too. If you're 20% better than the competition year after year after year, you will be so far ahead of them in the long term that it's unbelievable. Now let's consider the situation where you go learn a bunch of information, go to a bunch of computer science lectures, for example, and then you look at the next night of sleep. How does that affect your memory? Well, your next night of sleep is effectively like clicking the save button on a new file, your brain. There was a study in 1924 where a group of people learned some new information in the morning, and then they were retested on the information eight hours later in the afternoon or the evening. Another group learned that information in the night and slept eight hours before they were tested on it in the morning. Who do you think did better? Sleeping eight hours effectively cemented that knowledge in their brain. One night of sleep made them 20 to 40% better than the first group. Honestly, people who think they're overall more productive by sleeping less, it's a ridiculous argument. Half the time, you don't even use those one to two hours productively. You just end up watching Mr. Beast videos or scrolling TikTok. Hopefully at this point, you're convinced that sleep is pretty f***ing important and you need to get better at it. Well, like I said before, sleep is a skill. The more you learn about it, the more you practice it, the better you will get. With that, here are a bunch of tips that you can apply tonight to improve the depth and duration of your sleep. And none of these are original magic solutions. These are just techniques that I've heard other people discuss that I have implemented and have really helped me get more rest. But if you actually do everything I've listed down below, your life will become significantly better. All right, first of all, turn off your overhead lights at 8 to 9 p.m. Trust me on this one. Those bright overhead lights are a screaming signal to your brain that you should be wide awake right now, which is really not what you want in the evening. After dinner, I will go around my apartment and turn off all the unnecessary lights. And the ones that I leave on are placed lower in my environment so they're less activating. I also have some red lights that I'll turn on in the evening. Red lights are awesome because they don't stop your melatonin like blue or white lights. I've retrofitted my entire apartment with Philips Hue light bulbs, but if you don't want to get those, these red night lights are really helpful. They're a lot cheaper. I have my entire bathroom filled with these. They're great for when you wake up at 3 a.m., crusty-eyed, and you want to go to the bathroom without losing your tiredness. Also, start wearing a sleeping mask. This is incredible. This single thing will drastically improve your sleep. I recommended my friend Pranov start using a sleeping mask, and I'm not joking, the next morning after he used it for the first time, he called me and just told me that his sleep was so much better. It was incredible. In the morning, you'll want to do the opposite. You'll want to get outside, get some natural sunlight in your eyes, and also immediately turn on every single light in your living space. You might think they're redundant, but they're not. You need to get as much light as possible into your eyes. I have a few daylight lamps around my apartment that will shine a massive amount of blue light in the morning just to wake me up. Temperature is another really important tool that you can use to get better sleep. In the evening, turn on your AC and lower the temperature down to 66 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the sweet spot. You can take a warm shower as well. Counterintuitively, that will draw your blood to the surface and dump a massive amount of heat, cooling you for the night. Studies have shown that if you sleep in a cooler environment, you will fall asleep faster and sleep more deeply deeply and wake up more refreshed. It's counterintuitive, but cooler temperatures help you sleep much better. Additionally, a cooler environment can also help reduce night sweats, which can be disruptive to sleep. In the morning, now this is starting to be a pattern, do the exact opposite. Turn up your temperature, take a cold shower. This will help you wake up fully and sleep even better the next night. Here's some miscellaneous more behaviors that can help your sleep. Nowadays, every night I will pop in my AirPods after I put on my sleeping mask and my breath tape and I'll listen to a fiction audiobook. This really helps me wind down, calm down, and fall asleep. Honestly, I don't recall even one night in the past year or so where it's taken me more than 10 to 15 minutes to fall asleep. And it's because of a very structured wind down routine. And also try not to eat too close to bed. Your last meal should be two to three hours before you fall asleep. And that includes your last drink too. You want to be able to use the bathroom before you fall asleep so you don't have to wake up in the night and pee. This is another big thing for me. A couple of weeks ago, I was waking up every night to use the bathroom. It was super disruptive to my sleep. Another pretty common trick that I use, I set like four or five alarms in the morning just to make sure I don't sleep through them. Some supplements you can take to improve your sleep are elf theanine, apigenin, magnesium l 3 Make sure to check out Huberman Lab's podcast on sleep. He goes way more in depth into the research behind some of those supplements. One supplement you should avoid at all costs is melatonin. That stuff is really bad for you if you start to take it regularly. Melatonin isn't regulated, so the over-the-counter versions have way too much in it. So it can cause some really weird hormonal effects. I would not recommend it. If you made it this far, it'd be great if you could drop a like and subscribe, especially if you're interested in more videos just like this. My name is Amon, and on this channel, we break down strategies and tools that you can use to improve your life, whether it's getting your first job in tech or improving your sleep. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.